Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jock Slade. It's the show that wants to know who Allen Iverson is talking about in this clip from all the smoke. It's one guy mm -hmm. that you know I'm talking to. You know, I know people think yeah. it's, it's, it's Skip. It's not you. Mm -hmm. And just trust me, the way you hate me, mother I hate you too. Oh, and you and your daddy. Whoa, I've never seen AI like that. And he loves everybody. Just gonna put this out there, if it's the same clown and clown outlet that I won't name that has been hating on two of my faves in sports media lately, just know I'm right there with you, AI. All right, time for some hot takes. Jordan Brand has unveiled their holiday 2020 lineup, which means all the sneaker blogs have to resort to old school SEO tricks, giving each you a post and flooding their site instead of having them all in one place. Sorry having some flashbacks here to when I had to make like 30 different posts about the Concord 11s nearly a decade ago. One for each leak or B-grade seller showing off their pairs you can buy early. Shout out to Marquis Soul and your watermark on the bottom of every picture that was super annoying to try and crop out. Speaking of the Jordan preview, can we talk about the what the Air Jordan 5 and how it played with my emotions? Remember the teasers for this a few months ago when people were saying that the super exclusive Tokyo 23 Air Jordan 5s were coming back? Hey leakers and blogs, next time you tease a what the sneaker, don't play with my emotions. It's like Microsoft saying Series X pre-orders will be just fine and then four hours later, I don't know if I added to cart or if I got kicked out of the site. Sorry, it's just been a rough few days. I'm not bitter, I'm not bitter. Moving on. In this week's example of, sure, let's do that. What, what could go wrong? WSS, a chain of sneaker stores located mostly in California, had a wristband release of the Air Jordan 1 Biohack, or is it Baroque Brown? I don't know. You guys can call it whatever you want. Anyways, a wristband release where you have to go to the store the day before to get a wristband and then come back to pick it up sounds like a lot of work for a shoe that's selling for slightly above retail plus tax. Not to mention there's a pandemic going around and I trust sneakerheads to be socially distant like I trust Sony to send me an email because I'm a valued PlayStation customer and will get priority to pre-order directly from them again. Ah, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. We'll, we'll talk about all this later. So last week, the San Francisco 49ers won against the New York Jets because, well, it's the Jets. However, I may or may not have been feeling myself a little too much on the show because while my team did win against the New York JV squad, we also lost a number of key players to injury, throwing our season into doubt. Does that mean I've lost confidence in our team's ability to bounce back? Of course not. We'll be fine. But just in case, I'll be watching the rest of the season while hugging my emotional support sneaker. What? You guys thought that was a joke last week? This is serious business. All right, keeping it in football, I have to give props to New England Patriots coach Bill Belichick for showing off the Yeezy Winter 2021 collection when he showed up to a press conference looking like he just came back from a biker rally. Coach out here living his best life. Think about it, he's finally got a quarterback that can run for more than five yards without instantly becoming a meme. His team nearly put off a win against the Seattle Seahawks that looks like it's gonna be a contender this season and if he wanted to, can dress like 1980s Pat Riley and pull it off nicely. Okay, maybe not 80s Riley, but you get the idea. Bill's got all those rings, let's let him live. So this week, millions of people took an L online as their attempts to score a highly coveted item was met with bots, opportunistic resellers, and well, more bots. I'm not talking about PJ Tucker's Kobe 5 PE, but something actually cool, the Xbox Series X. And I'm here to tell you, it's gonna be okay and to not worry about not having one on day one. Last week, wait, are we just repeating last week's bit and just replacing with Microsoft and Xbox? Man, almost had me there for a second. Anyways, it looks like the Xbox is shaping up to have a big holiday season. While the PlayStation 5 stumbled with their pre-order debacle the previous week, the Xbox countered with a, a less crappy rollout. Yeah, it was still sneakers level bad for the most part, but it looks like Microsoft is saying and doing all the right things to win this console generation from the jump. And with the announcement that they picked up ZeniMax Media, which owned Bethesda Softworks and everything under that umbrella, they are really going for it. Now, all I need for them is to drop the Air Jordan 1 Xbox with that beautiful and buttery green suede and I'm all in. But does that mean you have to have the Xbox Series X or Series S this November? 
that's where I'm going to tell you to pump the brakes a little bit. Don't be like all those people on Amazon who helped the Xbox One X jump up in sales over 700% because they were so desperate to buy something Xbox with an X on it and they didn't even bother to check if they got the right one. Man, there are going to be some disappointed kids this holiday and I'm here for all those videos that parents are gonna post on TikTok or whatever TikTok is in a few months. But back to my original point. Don't sweat missing out on one of these boxes on launch day. Don't waste too much energy chasing pre-orders or risking getting the Rona by lining up at a Target on a cold November night. There's not a single game at launch or the rest of 2020 that's worth it. Seriously, look, let's break it down. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You can buy it on Xbox One and PS4 and it'll upgrade to next gen for free when you do get a new box. NBA 2K21. If you buy the Mamba Forever Edition, you can upgrade to next gen, but you know the rule with sports games, always skip the first one of a new generation. Fortnite, hey, remember when we played Fortnite on the show? Yeah, you can still play it on PS4, Xbox One, your PC, your i, well, I mean, Android phone. Uh, there's Watchdog Legion, see Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, that came out last year and it was, Fine. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. It's available everywhere like Fortnite. So yes, you can't escape Call of Duty Ronald Reagan. Yay. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. This could have been a must have PS5 game, but it's also launching on PS4. Marvel's Avenger, sure. But do you really want to suffer again with prettier graphics? Demon Souls, it's a remake of an 11 year old game, which is cool if you're into throwing controllers after a boss kills you in one hit for the 10th time, I guess. So my suggestion is if you already got a pre-order, congratulations, enjoy the rush and the fleeting moment of cool you get when you're a day one owner. I remember having that feeling for the original Xbox and the 360 and that lasted all of a few hours. And then afterwards, I kept asking myself where the games were after playing Geometry Wars for hundreds of hours. By the time the PS4 and Xbox One came out, I knew what I was getting into and I was ready for the post-launch drought. But if you didn't get one, don't fret about it. The day will come when you can walk into almost any store, buy your new box, and a few of the launch games will already be on sale. Once again, I'm taking the relaxed approach, which is a lot better than, kid, it's not that serious. Save your money, finish all those games on Xbox Game Pass you haven't touched like the Outer Worlds and invest in a 4K TV first to really get that next gen looks because if you have a 1080p set, a Series X is pointless. Let's start with the heat check. Uh, this is your must see source for sneaker drops and analysis, AKA uh, I'm basically making jokes about the shoes because it's not that serious even when you do take an L. So first up, the Nike Air Presto Pine Green. These drop on the 28th for 130 bucks. These are continuing the 20th anniversary of the Presto and this Pine Green colorway that is based on the Nigerian national team aesthetic is complete with the Niger call out on the hill. Pretty dope. We have the women's Air Jordan Rain Ash. These are on the 29th for $200. Uh, so it's an Air Jordan 13 with a Vapormax outsole. I really thought we left that Fusion concept years ago, but I guess we're trying it again with this pair in women's sizes. I think the term, bless your heart, applies here. Then we have the Minions and Reebok Instapump Fury. These are on the first for 160 bucks. Between this and the Toy Story Instapumps, now we have sneakers ready for wearing at Disneyland and Universal Studios whenever they open again. Now I need a pair for Magic Mountain. Then we have the Air Max 3 Laser Blue. These drop on the second for $140. Uh, it, fun fact, looks like Nike is actually bringing back the original name of the 90. Hopefully this doesn't become an Xbox Series S and Xbox One X situation and nobody knows what they got. It's a cool colorway at least. Then we have the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 Carbon. These drop on the second for $220. It's a Yeezy. And then my pick of the week is the Nike Kobe 5 Five Rings. These drop on the 30th for 180 bucks. Uh, as of this recording, it's listed as an overseas drop. So in the interest of fairness, we're gonna put it on here with the hopes it will also get a stateside release on the same day. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Now for a prepared statement from my co-writer about Kanye West and his claim that he will wear Jordans until he's on the Adidas board. Uh, check this out. I still don't give a and also, we talked about this a few weeks ago. He just repeating now. Ugh. Oh. Oh, sorry. Looks like we actually have a second prepared statement from my co-writer after he caught some heat for the Superman and Boba Fett slander from last week's episode. Uh, okay, so here, here goes. Yeah, and uh, look, 
look, just get over yourself, nerds. Look, we're nerds too, and we're entitled to our opinion. Like, rooting for Superman is like rooting for Drake to go viral. Woo! Like, we get it. He keeps on winning. Yay! And as for Boba Fett, he's the Air Jordan 2 of Star Wars. Yeah, he's interesting conceptually, but if I have to throw an OG character into the Sarlacc pit, it's gonna be him. Boom. Okay, so let's do a heat check on LeBron James and the Nike LeBron 18. We are only one release into the lifespan of the 18, and it appears to be a good start with the Reflections colorway selling out in no time. By the way, check out our unboxing of that very shoe after you watch this video. It's the one with the thumbnail with the shoe and the signed Magic Johnson photo. Yeah, I'm just showing off at this point. Now, whether that holds true for release number two, number eight, or number 21, well, that remains to be seen. It feels like the energy is always there for the first few colorways of every new LeBron shoe, and then it slowly fades away, except when there's a collab with Ronnie Feig or an ex ultra exclusive pair that you can only get when you pull a purple Universe Infinity Stone card in NBA 2K or whatever. But as we get further and further away from the debut, the hype dies down, and even those first few pairs that were super hard to get are now coming down to earth at resale. I guess you could say that's just the cycle of every new signature shoe release, but with the Lakers still deep in the playoffs as of this recording, I wonder if that will change the perception of the 18 and even the 17, which LeBron is currently wearing, except when he brings out some retro sevens to troll the Clippers, allegedly. Assuming LeBron doesn't pull a Michael Jordan and wears his latest signature shoe deep into the NBA Finals, we won't see the LeBron 18 on the court until next season, and who knows when that will be. Can the LeBron 18 afford to be MIA that long, or does it ultimately not matter because kids these days don't really care what LeBron or Kyrie or Dame do with their signature shoes on the court? What ultimately matters to them is how much hype they can generate for themselves when they rock them on the street from a safe social distance. It's a wait and see, I guess. I give the Nike LeBron 18 a heat check rating of six tacos out of nine alley-oops to the GOAT. Alex Caruso. And now for this week's hard pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like wanton endangerment. Like what the f is that? This week we learned that zero officers were charged directly with the murder of Breonna Taylor. None. As a matter of fact, two officers, Sergeant John Mattingly and Detective Miles Cosgrove, got away with nothing more than a slap on the wrist. And even that is being generous. While a third officer, Brett Hankinson, was charged with wanton endangerment. Now, wanton endangerment sounds like something serious, right? It sounds like Hankinson was being reckless and putting people's lives in danger unnecessarily. And he was, but it wasn't for Brianna's life. It was for the lives and the walls of their neighbors because the shots Hankinson fired through Brianna's walls and windows went into another home. Am I making light of wanton endangerment charges? No, absolutely not. Thank goodness those people were not seriously hurt and whatever trauma they might be going through right now should be addressed. But that shouldn't be the only charge in this case. It should be the 10th or 20th item in a list long enough to fill an episode of this show. The walls Hankinson carelessly shot got more justice than Brianna. Walls mattered more than Brianna. What kind of world are we living in where that is fair? This is why people are protesting. This is why we kept telling the world to say her name because we knew that this could happen and that this was the likely outcome. It started with Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron taking five months before meeting with Taylor's family, long after her name and case had become a national story. Who knows if Cameron would even know who Brianna was if she wasn't tragically trending. Then we started to hear the stories of the Taylor family getting a 12 million settlement and the promise of police reform in the city after filing a wrongful death suit. The Taylor family and their attorneys said that wasn't enough. Of course, 12 million, 12 billion, it's not going to bring Brianna back. But after that news broke, you can already see where this was going. Then came word that an announcement was coming in regards to the grand jury decision and that Louisville police were setting up barricades in the city and officers were being denied vacation time. It felt inevitable, but you still wanted to believe that maybe, just maybe, our voices would be heard this time and that these officers would be charged. And now we're here, listening to the hollow words of Cameron. Because there was not a day the people in this office didn't go to sleep thinking about this case. 
The criminal law is not meant uh, to respond uh, to every sorrow and grief. Uh, and that is, that is true here. Hmm. Okay then, take emotions out of all of this and the fact remains a black woman was murdered and no one is being held accountable. Cameron had six murder charges that he could have pursued, but chose not to because Manningly and Crossgrove were justified in protecting themselves since Kenneth Walker, Taylor's boyfriend, allegedly shot first. But according to Walker, a legal gun owner, he fired because he didn't hear the police knock and allegedly announced themselves. Yeah, I'm still not seeing the part where this death was okay. Look, I understand that being a police officer is a difficult job and that they have to make decisions on the fly that in hindsight will look bad. But that is part of the deal. You take on the monumental responsibility of becoming a law enforcement officer, you also deal with the monumental consequences. You certainly don't get to write a 2 a.m. email to your former colleagues that you and your boys, quote, did the legal, moral, and ethical thing that night, which is what Sergeant Mattingly did. Because even if the legal part is true, Mattingly sure as hell doesn't get to claim the moral part or the ethical part. The attitude shouldn't be, oh well, can't do anything about it because it's the law. It should be, well, why is that the law and what can we do about this system that is in place that prevents us from holding those who are supposed to protect us accountable when they make a mistake or cross the line? And don't think we don't notice the little microaggressions in that email either, claiming the FBI couldn't do his job or that police don't care if the person they're dealing is black, white, Hispanic, Asian, or whatever they identify as dot, dot, dot this week. Some remorse, some semblance of humanity in that email would have been nice. At least then we can maybe try to find some sort of understanding and sympathy while still acknowledging that monumental f up. But no, we're here now. And it's not that least bit shocking. All right. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Hard Pass. I'm Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week with another episode. But before we go, we just wanted to play our respects to Keith Huffnagel, skating legend and founder of Huff Worldwide, who died at the age of 46 to brain cancer. Huffnagel is survived by his wife, Mary Ellen, and their two children. Huff Worldwide launched in 2002 in San Francisco and has become a staple of skate culture and streetwear ever since. In 2004, Huff was immortalized in a Nike SB Dunk High that paid homage to the San Francisco Giants, but mixed it up by giving it the tie-dye treatment. He will be missed.